Hi. Um, so this was um, kind of um, spur of the moment. So I don't have a I don't have lots of pretty visuals to show you. So I'm going to talk. Um, I can talk a lot. So somebody's got to give me time when I've talked too much. So feel free to jump in and do that. Um, so I have been in this position um, with the Downtown Kingsport Association since November of 2019. Um, took that job at that time, jumped in, and it was holiday season and all kinds of stuff that had to happen. Um, we made it happen and started planning for all of the, the things we were going to do in 2020, and the world fell apart. So um, had to pivot um, and really change up how we were, what we were able to do. Um, you know, we couldn't do events that brought people to downtown. A lot of the tried and trues that we do, our monthly uh, shop and hops and things like that. So we became a resource, uh, really a resource agency for uh, the downtown merchants. If you're a small business owner, and there's probably some of, the, of you in the room, um, with everything that was happening at that time when the pandemic first hit and the, the shutdowns were happening, um, information was coming at you at this incredible uh, speed and it was like trying to drink out of a fire hose if you were a small business owner and you think it these folks don't have an HR department they don't have a, a CFO they're doing it all on their own so we became a clearinghouse for them working in conjunction with Cosby um, the, the Office of Small Business and Entrepreneurship at the Chamber which is a uh, TSBDC program um, with the Chamber itself and try to to be there to um, keep them up to date with the latest information coming out from the state and the federal level and how to help them navigate the paperwork, how to get their employees signed up for unemployment, how to navigate the PPP process and all of those things. So um, it was a different first year uh, for sure. Um, and it's still different. We're still not doing things exactly like we did um, prior to, um, I guess, March of, of uh, 2020, but we figured out new ways to do things, and um, I will tell you that um, we've got some incredible stories in our downtown area that have come out of um, the pandemic. I call it the silver lining. We've got so many new businesses that started during this time period. Um, a lot of us kind of knew that what we would see coming out of this uh, were people that would, um, they'd go for their dream. They had something they had always wanted to do, uh, and that turned out to kind of be the time for them to take that step out um, and try it. One of my favorite stories is Positive Ambitions downtown on Market Street, and it is a, it's a dog spa. Uh, they groom your dog. They do everything. Those girls are wonderful. They were all three groomers uh, with uh, PetSmart, and they were all furloughed. They had always wanted to have their own business. They pulled their resources, they um, got it open in March of 2020, and they have not looked back. They are doing fabulous. If you try to get an appointment right now, it may be um, six to eight weeks out before you can get on their books. Uh, walk by someday because they, they've got the, the windows are open and they've always got the dogs in there being groomed and you can, you can see and watch. Uh, we've got all kinds of stories like that. Um, so a little bit of a 2021 recap real quickly. Um, some information I wanted to share to you and it kind of worked out well because I've been working on a lot of reports here lately. But in 2021, we had a net gain of 18 new businesses in downtown Kingsport and 44 jobs that resulted from those businesses. Now in 2020, we had a net gain of 20, 21 new businesses in downtown Kingsport and that was smack dab in the middle of the worst part of the pandemic. Um, so there is a lot of good things going on in downtown Kingsport. We are seeing more economic development activity, um, and I'm pulling from John Rose's notebook here, than we have seen in about 25 years. That's the community as a whole, but in our downtown, there is a lot of interest. Um, lots of new businesses. If you haven't been out in a while, park that car and get out and walk. Go visit Sullivan Street. We have got some really unique new businesses on Sullivan Street. You have Tea's Spilled Milk Bakery, which she's got a great story. It was actually in the paper not long after she opened um, her background and she was somebody who had a dream. This is something she had always wanted to do. Um, and she is doing it. And it's so much fun to watch these people um, get to, to do their, make their passion come true and uh, watch them succeed. We've got uh, Sleepy Jeans Candle Company. If you haven't been there, you're missing out. They have the most wonderful shop. It's on Sullivan Street. It's a tiny shop. Um, the aesthetics are fabulous. All of her candles are handmade, 100% um, uh, natural uh, cotton wicks. 
just um, soy candles. So go in there. She does a great business. We've had her on daytime Tri-Cities and helped her get a little traffic there. Um, you've got Downtown Plant Bar. That's another just wonderful business on Sullivan Street that's doing all sorts of classes that you can uh, sign up for. They've got one, gosh, at least every week in February. Um, Sullivan Street is an area that, you know, um, has struggled um, over the years. And so these three businesses coming in and providing that good solid anchor and that traffic there uh, for places like Duane's, the comic book shop, which that may not be your thing, but they do a tremendous business there. And, you know, a lot of people in the community uh, enjoy going there. So um, lots of stuff going on there. Um, so, you know, we um, had some good events during the holidays. We had hosted over eight different holiday events six different holiday promotions that brought more than 7,000 visitors and shoppers to downtown Kingsport in November and December. We had sales records that were broken um, by our merchants and I talked to them every time we have a shop and hop, every time we have a special event um, and say, you know, what the sales and they'll give me percentage numbers. Um, Small Business Saturday in November, set all sorts of sales records for Hometown Cottage, for Boomtown. Um, for the candle shop, for the bakeries, um, for Cindy Soddy's gallery, for impressions. Um, and then we decided this year for the first time, we typically always do our shop and hops. It's the first Thursday of every month, February through December. For December, we decided we'd do all this stuff on a Saturday downtown with the parade and the tree lighting. And we added a lot of fun activities this year. We did a children's workshop um, at Glen Bruce Park and Santa was there. We have the best Santa, by the way. And <laughs> uh, we had uh, pictures with Santa for the kids. We had letters to Santa. All of those are free activities. We don't charge for those. Uh, we had a food truck rally. We had free entertainment. So we're like, why don't we go ahead and try moving that shop and hop to that Saturday? We have all of these people downtown already. So we did. And it just went fabulous. It went fabulous. Uh, our businesses broke those Small Business Saturday sales record, records wide open. Um, they all stayed open much later than they typically would, so it was a good day. We'll do that again next year. We found something that works really well. Uh, we're work, already working on some fun plans for, for next Christmas. Uh, if you saw Christmas in the Park this year at Glen Bruce Park, that was something new that came together rather quickly. Um, but it was so popular. Folks really enjoyed it. Um, it just added one more thing to get out of your car and go do in downtown Kingsport. Uh, we have such a walkable downtown and I've lived here all my life too. Um, and so we can all become sight blind to what we've got um, and, and what's around us. But we, we have a really nice downtown. It, it's, it's got, you know, we've got three city parks. We've got a dog park. We've got the carousel, um, great parking. We have great parking in downtown Kingsport. Uh, we don't really have a parking problem is what I like to say. We've got a walking problem. We have 10 uh, free uh, public lots in downtown Kingsport. The furthest distance from what we have on our map is the center of downtown, the intersection of Center and Broad Street. It's a seven minute walk. And that's from the back of the higher ed parking lot. So we've got a lot of, a lot of great parking. Um, we were just recognized by uh, the National Main Street Association. It was kind of fun the other day. Social media is a huge part of what we do. Um, it is a huge part of what our small businesses do. They most don't have big marketing budgets. So small, you know, if you, you've got to learn how to take it, uh, social media and make it work for you. Uh, we were recognized downtown Kingsport. I happened to come across the other day from National Main Street of having one of the most walkable downtowns in the National Main Street program. And we were right there with Boston, with Eureka, and with Annapolis. So, um, you know, other people see we've got good things going on. And um, I like to tell all of, all of the folks that are in the community, we've got a lot of good stuff going on. Um, we've got some great stuff already planned coming up for this year. I went ahead and brought some copies and grab one if you want. We do a weekly newsletter. It's called The Weekend or it's digital. It goes out um, every Thursday. We really hone in on all the stuff going on in downtown Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but we also continue it on through the following Wednesday um, in there. But we, we really hone in on the, the stuff, you know, the food trucks, the live music, um, those sort of things on the weekends. But if there are sales, new merchandise, the artist in resident at the galleries, all that's in there. Uh, you can um, 
send us an email, and if you want to pick up a hard copy, that's this week's that went out yesterday. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to that, just shoot us an email, and we'll get you on that list. Uh, it's a really nice resource to have, uh, kind of see what's going on. And as the weather warms up, uh, the activities become more and more. Um, we have got our concert date set for um, the Twilight series. I've got those jotted down before I left the office. So it'll start on June 3rd and we'll go all the way through July the 15th. All of those are on a Friday, except our Independence Day celebration in Kingsport will actually be on Saturday, July the 2nd. Um, we've got some really fun stuff planned for you all. Um, we have, uh, the concert, and I, I hate to be one of those people because we can't talk about it right now, but we can't talk about it right now. But it's completely different from anything we've done in the past um, as far as entertainment wise, and so we're really excited about it. Um, it's it's going to be, um, it's going to be such a draw for the downtown businesses. And at the end of the day, as far as DKA is concerned, um, you know, we, we do a lot of events, but those events always have to be, at, we, uh, for, for us, they have to make a cash register ring somewhere in downtown Kingsport in some capacity if we're, we're doing events. There's a reason to bring people downtown. Not every event, um, uh, you know, hits every different business segment the same, but some of them, the restaurants do better. Some of them, uh, like the shop and hops, typically the retail shops, um, things like that do better. Some of them, the sports venues and the entertainment venues do better. So it's finding that mix, offering that mix of different events that draw people to downtown, uh, finding ways that we can partner uh, with other community organizations, um, leveraging and partnerships. Uh, are huge if you have a nonprofit. That's how you maximize your impact. That's how you maximize your budget. So we do a lot of partnerships with Visit Kingsport, of course with FunFest and Cosby. Um, Andrea, besides Andrea being a really, really good friend of mine and we've worked together for a long time, um, when I go out and talk to a new business downtown, the first thing I do is I take them a copy of uh, um, Andrea's um, um, uh, Superwoman St Smarts book and her business card and work with them to get an appointment set up with Andrea. Um, if you are a small business owner, um, that is a, a resource that um, I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to take advantage of it. Um, so we don't go and try to reinvent the wheel on some of these things because there are already experts in the community that do really well with that. We try to um, get them in touch with those folks, get them lined up with those resources. Um, the chamber, we also work really close with them. Um, if we bring in a, if we, we are not a membership based organization, by the way. I meant to mention that early on. Uh, years ago, DKA was, but now it is, we, we're a 501c3. So we, we are here to serve all of the businesses um, in downtown Kingsport, and however that capacity works for them. Uh, we can help them with marketing and promotions. Of course, hold those events that bring people downtown to, to patronize their business. Um, help them work together. We've got businesses like High Voltage, if you know Ann Greenfield at High Voltage, he is one of the best champions of downtown Kingsport you are ever going to find. And she will work with other businesses downtown. She will bring, of course, has a food truck there every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But she will work with the, um, the art galleries and they'll come over and maybe do uh, a paints and, um, and pints night. Uh, she's been known to have other restaurants come in and, and maybe provide the food for the evening. Uh, so she's great to, to reach out. We've got other, other businesses, the salons and the florist, and you may think that's an odd combination, but on Mother's Day at our Girls Not Out Shop and Hop back in May, it was a fantastic combination. So we had Rainbow Zen set up with Salon 108, uh, or Salon 111, and uh, they took all kinds of Mother's Day orders and sold bouquets on the spot. So uh, always trying to, to find ways to, to encourage them to work together and um, uh, if they're struggling a little, little bit, um, how can we help them? Um, you can tell I like downtown Kingsport, so. <laughs> my parents had a business in downtown Kingsport years ago when my, my boys were little, so. Um, and I used to, to help my parents there, so I'm, I'm passionate about it. Um, some new businesses that have opened up here recently that you might not know about. Let me get my right list here. We've got Legendary Massage on Wexler Street, a Smudge Salon that's opened up on Main Street, Schneider Chiropractic is on Broad Street, right above um, where um, Jay's Restaurant had been located. And then, of course, the Mayan Kickback Restaurant and Lounge. If you've not been to the Mayan Kickback on Broad Street, I know, I know the mayor has. Um, uh, Lucy Fleming and I had lunch there earlier this week. It's really good, so go in there. And she is a, she's a college student 
that is operating that restaurant while she's in school. So it's a really cool story. Um, really, really varied menu, and I think in you'll. The old Janmar. In the old Janmar, that's right. I know, you know everybody fusses about quit telling these people that have moved here how to find something by the name of what it used to be called because it's so confusing, you know, but yeah. <laughs> So like I will still refer to Brook Circle, which hasn't existed for how long? Yeah. yeah. That's my wife, <laughs> um, we've got um, a Fizzy Fairway Pup Pup Pub, which used to be the OMG Mini Golf over on uh, Shelby Street. But if you're somebody who's looking for a place for a kid's birthday party, it's a great place to do it. Uh, TNT uh, Sportsplex downtown, they are doing parties now. So I'm get, I've booked my grandson's four, a fourth birthday party there already. Uh, downtown Plant Bar will do party events for you. We have got the most amazing new businesses opened up, soft opening this month, and it's Atlas Culinary East. It is in the building on Clinchfield Street, right across from the chamber. Used to be, the form, it's a former Tobacco Road location. So these folks moved here from Northern California in November. They live in Colonial Heights. They had this Atlas Culinary Concepts out there uh, and it's cooking classes, it's a cooking school. And so they have, um, I actually saw them pop up. There's a, a Facebook group called um, Move to Johnson City, Bristol Kingsport that Jeff Fleming um, kind of turned me on to. So I get on there and it's a good place to sleuth and, and see who's, you know, who's looking at maybe opening a business and looking for property and things like that. So that's where they popped up on there. And they kind of ask, is anybody would be interested in this? They had an overwhelming response. So they are doing um, a wide variety of cooking classes, couples classes, um, kids cooking classes, uh, they're doing uh, private chef events. So I went to visit with them last Friday. They've got a commercial catering kitchen in there that they will be opening up to uh, caterers that need that type of space. Food trucks that maybe have a larger event and need a commercial kitchen to work out of for that event. So it's a, we've not, we don't have anything like this and uh, I'm super excited about it. Their classes are staying booked up already and it's just soft opening. They will go uh, official opening next month and their signage and everything will go up. Um, but that's just another one of those stories of um, the folks that, and I'm sure you all have heard all that Jeff Fleming has to talk about uh, with folks moving here from all over the country, but one of those stories. And uh, I will tell you, um, uh, I thank them for coming to downtown Kingsport. And um, he said, well, we went to Johnson City and it's so impossible to do business in Johnson City and to get a business open, the permitting process and the roadblocks that are thrown up. And he said, here, he said, it has been so surprisingly easy. And so we're proud of that. We're proud when we hear that from people that um, we're friendly, we're open. We, we, we don't make it a laborious process to try to come in and open up a small business. Um, and John Rose is just wonderful. And um, uh, I think he's one of the best things to happen in a long time. <laughs> Uh, and he will work with people. Um, it, it, there, there's not a roadblock there. It's how, how can we get you the information, get you in touch with the person that you need. Um, so we're really blessed uh, when it comes to that. Um, let's see, I'm just rambling along here, but I pulled all this stuff together yesterday. Let's see, what else did I wanna to talk to you about? Um, oh, we have got a, a program. So incentives wise, right now we've got the, um, a facade grant um, that in the, um, uh, I'm missing the name of the other one. We've got the rehabilitation. Thank you, Grant. Uh, and those are pretty much the two incentive programs that we've we've got right now that apply for downtown Kingsport. Um, so we're not quite as competitive as we could be, in comparison with others in the region. So we, uh, Greg Purdue and myself and some other folks have been working uh, for the, about the past six or seven months. And so we now have, it's a downtown Kingsport um, loan fund that we will push out probably at this point, Greg and I were talking a couple of days ago, uh, uh, mid to late June, so it'll be second quarter. It will be managed uh, for us through the first Tennessee Development District, which manages similar programs for Johnson City, Irwin, and Greenville. Um, it is going to be a really nice tool in our toolkit uh, for an incentives. Uh, it's a micro loan program. We've got right now commitments from seven financial institutions to put up 
money that will be committed for a 10-year period into this loan fund. Uh, and then FTDD will manage the application process, the credit checks, things like this. But these are typically the cap will be around $25,000 on these loans. And the bankers in the room know that, um, you know, if somebody's refrigeration unit or their AC unit goes out, that, that sometimes is such a smaller loan than what they're typically dealing with. So this allows a way to work with those businesses, get them those funds, um, the the banks it works well for them and I'll I, you know I see Bill nodding his head but uh, so it's it's Johnson City's had their program for probably almost 15 years now so we're really excited about that we'll get that one up and running yeah I'm, I'm excited about this one and it will be for uh, existing businesses as well as new businesses and that's something where we don't really right now other than the facade grant for an existing business that maybe runs into a little difficulty um, I think this is going to be um, a huge asset and and that will be perceived by those business owners um, as something there to, to to help them and to be there to assist them um, and then hopefully after we get this one up and running I'm hoping to, to look at a, a grant program uh, there's a lot of grant money out there available through uh, the Tennessee Main Street and then the Tennessee um, Economic Development Department. Um, and there's some programs across the state where they have grant funds uh, for someone to come in and open up their a new business in your downtown and they get a certain amount of seed money to do that. Um, Johnson City got one uh, a couple of years ago, so that's how Hometown Cottage has now uh, opened up their second location in downtown Johnson City through that. So Melody's a good friend of mine that owns um, Hometown Cottage, so we've already talked and you know pros and cons. How did that one work? What would have been helpful if it, it, it you know what 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 would have been helpful that's not available as we start building out this this program down the road? So that's that's the next thing that we want to work on. Um, I think. Um, other than Shop and Hops, we've got one this Thursday, next Thursday, February the 3rd. It's the Sweetheart Shop and Hop, so it's time to shop for Valentine's Day. And we've got everything you could possibly want in downtown Kingsport, from candy to gift certificates to spas and salons to flowers, you name it, we've got it. Um, so don't miss that. Get out and shop. We uh, Social media, if you don't follow us on Facebook and Instagram, go do that. We push a tremendous amount of information out. Um, uh, uh, stories and our posts um, and lots of data there. Uh, don't forget to let us know if you want the newsletter. We started a new newsletter this month. It's called the Quarterly Just for Downtown Merchants and Business Owners. Um, it uh, will send it out. My goal on the next one is I think I've got it like to go out the second week of March information for the quarter going forward um, all of the this time we gave them all the shop and hop dates and themes and we've got some great themes coming up um, I like nothing better than a good theme so uh, we've got some fun stuff uh, October we're doing which is not out for the shop and hop just put that away it's gonna be fun and um, Halloween happens to be my favorite holiday but anyway um, information like that the tournaments that are taking place visit Kingsport brings in for most people, you are not aware of how much tourism dollars they bring in through the sports tournaments they bring in. And we bring in softball, volleyball, baseball, basketball, swimming, wrestling, and I'm probably missing one somewhere in the mix. Um, the entire month of February, we have a swim meet, uh, a co collegiate level swim meet championships at the Aquatic Center every weekend the month of February. So letting the merchants know when these tournaments are in between Visit Kingsport and TNT and then when Greg <laughs> Creech gears up for his um, baseball tournaments uh, coming in spring and summer, that helps the merchants Im immensely, especially the restaurants, helps them with staffing. Um, they know these tournaments are in town um, and uh, they can staff accordingly because there's nothing worse than having uh, four ball teams roll in and you didn't have a clue that they were in town. Uh, and we've even got a uh, Center Street girl, gosh, she's great. You know, Saturdays are, it's probably his slowest day of the week. So last year he started um, some of these ball teams that come in and got to know him and he will just let them reserve the restaurant for the evening and bring the whole team in and, and have their dinner there. And so it's fun finding ways to, to get everybody to work together and it's, it's a plus for a win-win for everybody. Um, we gave them information on parking downtown every now and then. As the mayor knows we have a parking that rears its ugly head. So um, had a little parking 101 in it uh, to remind everybody of what city codes and ordinances are. And um, so that was well received. It's 
a good way to get information out to them um, ahead of time as they're planning their marketing and promotions and things for the year. So um, I've talked a lot. Um, any, any questions from anybody? 